David, this is a fascinating product. What, what is it? Uh, these are our bore gauge uh, systems, uh, bore measurement for, for the control, the measurement and the control of critical bores. Yeah, um, can we change it? You know, is it a, again a closed loop? Yeah, it's the, the idea is um, it's a complete closed loop system. So the bore gauge can come into the whilst on the machine tool. It can measure uh, the, t the traditional way that we would run it is we would do a first a pre measurement of the bore to determine uh, what the what the next cut is. So then you come in and you make an adjustment to the tool offset so you can then make one uh, final cut and then come back in with the bore gauge to uh, to actually do a final inspection of the bore. So there must be companies out there dying to use this. I, I, Back in the day when I used to go to uh, an engine manufacturer, you used to inspect one in ten um, engines on, on their bores. Yeah, yeah. Would they not just do it 100% now? No, yeah. no, no operator intervention? Yeah, but that's the beauty. It's completely with, with you know, automated without operator. Again, you can do 100% inspection or you can still do sample inspection as well. So you could do it one in ten or you know, one in five, um, but, but fully automated uh, full, with a full closed loop you know, and feedback. It's, it's a measurement tool, not a gauge, I presume. We're actually getting the measurement rather than a yes, yes or a no. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, with, this, with the spindle probes, traditional spindle probes, of course, we're reliant on the machine tool because that's what's giving us our axis positions. The bore gauge is an independent measuring device. So it's, the machine is literally positioning the gauge into the bore, and from then on, we're actually taking a measurement, an independent measurement of the bore. And this is Digilog technology? Yes, it form, forms into the Digilog range of, of products. You have two measuring sensors, well, we, we can have as many measuring sensors, but the standard one is, is with two. Um, as they compress into the bore, it feeds back an analog signal to our measuring uh, device within the, in the head, which is then uh, transmitted radio, radio waves to, uh, to the receiver unit. How else could I measure? Obviously, we're not just checking the uh, uh, diameter, we're checking ovality and other things like that. So yes. how else could I do it on the machine? Um, you could use a um, spindle probe, um, but of course, A, it would take longer. The cycle time would be longer. And of course, the beauty of the, of the ball gauge is it's an independent measuring device. So we, we're, not, we're not reliant on machine tool uh, access to, to do that measurement. Other than that, you would probably have to do it off the machine as a, as a post-process measurement. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating, and we've got it on the screen here. So, does that yes. mean we can pull reports? So, maybe we're doing components automated. We could come at the end of the day, and we could pull off a report for the 30 components we've made. Yeah, well, the, the way a lot of customers use it is, is first of all, they use it as, as just a, a sort of a, a control device in the pro, in the machining process. So, it's continually feeding back and adjusting the, the tool offsets. So, therefore, it works on extreme limits, wear limits. So, it's like a traffic light system. So, it's always updating itself. But actually, in the background of the PC, we're actually storing those measured results. So, you can pull that off as a report for analysis later to see how each individual machine is performing uh, and, and how the production is changing over, you know, dur during periods of the day. And how about a component like a, a hydraulic control unit for, for an aircraft? That's got, at that port will have two or three different diameters, maybe even more. So how do we inspect all those different ones? The, the, the bore gauge is kind of dedicated to the bore that it's trying to measure. So if, in theory, if you have uh, different bore sizes, then you need different uh, bore gauges to, to do that. We can run that all off one receiver units where we can run a number of bore gauges off one unit but we, it's also uh, it's not a product that's just standard off the shelf so we can actually do sort of customer specific solutions so dependent on the application it could be that we can get different measuring head sizes within one bore gauge so one bore gauge can do a number of, of bores. So this is obviously smart factory industry forward but, but it's not the future is it this is technology we should be adopting today. Yeah, uh, I think you know, with, with everyone's looking at modern uh, productivity, machining processes, this ensuring that parts are correct, you know, you're producing good parts is something that every, from, from small workshops right up to the big tier ones and the OEMs that, that, that they have to adopt. And as it's Digilog family, I presume we can use it on pretty much any control as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the con for, for the ball gauge, it's relatively straightforward on the control because it is an independent measuring device. So everything is happening through our own software on our own PC. Literally, we drive the, the, the only NC involvement is driving the ball gauge into the bore itself. After that, it's independent. So yeah, very easy on any control.